Welcome to another time-lapse animation voiceover, this time going through the creation of the intro to the item spawning tutorial. Here at the beginning you can see I'm actually making use of the pose thumbnails add-on, a great add-on that I'm definitely going to do a tutorial on later. Ultimately I was getting annoyed that I didn't have a library of different facial expressions, so you can see here that I'm actually going through and creating and saving poses for a bunch of different facial expressions. So I'm basically creating the poses, adding them into the list, and then generating the thumbnails, which I then save to a file and then load and associate with the given pose. Part of what makes this consistent is also the use of selection sets kind of at the bottom right there. This is a tool that lets you define a set of bones to be grouped in a sense so that when you click on one of those selection sets it's going to select all the bones that's in that group. So that way I'm always very consistent in which bones are actually applied for each of these poses. So here as I mentioned I'm just going through all the different poses and now that I'm ready I can see that it's library linked into my typical asset file along with my body poses which I already had. To start off here I'm going to be using my body poses to roughly create the major keyframes for my character. I'm starting off with creating the macro body shapes mostly focusing on the torso, very rough arms and very rough head position, if any, and then going through the entire motion. So what I know that I want to do is essentially have my character vomit out all the items, much like one would in the game itself, and then end up with a mic in his hand, which he will then very dramatically mic drop. And so I'm just going through the macro poses of first the intro stance, the realization that there's a vomit coming, and then the positions of actual uh, ejecting all the items. And so I'm going for a little bit of dramatic poses at first, uh, but again this is still very rough and you'll notice that I'm spacing the keyframes out quite a bit. I'm just trying to get to the, the main pose to pose poses of all of this. We also see that I end up converting all these keyframes initially to be in the linear or constant rather interpolation so that there's not smooth blending between each of the poses that lets me focus on the poses themselves. You also see that I was able to already make use of the facial library. I applied a quick face facial expression to my character at the end, a little bit of a frowning shape. And now you can see that I'm actually setting up the, the final uh, pose. And I kind of have my very, very rough end-to-end -end sequence here. Again, I'm just focused on the overall shapes at this point. And then I'll start going through and cleaning things up a little bit further. The next thing I was working on was actually creating a very simple mic item. I didn't even end up texturing this. I felt that it was uh, at least simple enough and self-evident enough. You can see here that I was uh, a little bit struggling with uh, my familiarity with right-click select over left-click, so I briefly changed it to right select to do my loop selections, change it back after. I'm then just applying very simple materials. Again, no textures, given how quickly I wanted to get through this and then I'm adding it as a group instance and attaching it to my hand. There's not a particular need to add it as a group instance, I just find that I do that to keep things a little bit cleaner in case I want to edit or have it in a separate place. I don't have to worry about it moving all over. And here you can see how I've set up the animation. So it's actually parented to the wrist bone, which again is a very quick and dirty way to do this. Ordinarily, you might actually do a more dynamic parent setup, but in this case it works fine because I know my final pose of dropping the mic, the rest of my character is going to be static and not moving around. And now you'll see that I actually had just turned everything into Bezier curves, so things are a little bit smooth, and I'm starting to refine some of the motions. 
And here you can see I'm focusing on the dropping of the mic drop itself. I'm actually playing around with the finger controls of this rig to get it into that final position where I know the handle will open and I'm going to end up animating the mic dropping down to the floor. Again, I'm going between single isolated selection in the dope sheet and the summary view so I can play around with the overall keyframes and individual keyframes. I'm using box select quite a bit in the summary view using B and then left click selecting and moving around sets of keyframes and using S to scale the keyframes around to adjust as necessary. Now I'm doing something a little bit unique with the head where I'm actually making it jitter a little bit by using a noise modifier on a specific rotation axis. So you'll see in the graph editor how there's these little bars and little wiggles going between the keyframes. That's a very useful tool for getting some extra details in your animation without spending a lot of time trying to emulate creating random movements. Here I'm using a little bit of my Python experience to actually generate the group or collection, I should say, for all of my items. So you'll see a little bit of the technical side here, but again, just demonstrating that if you know a little bit of code, you can do a lot of very useful things that save you time. Ultimately what I wanted was a collection that has around 100 to 200 all unique items that were generated by my item spawning capability in MC Prep. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm going through via code all of the items in the item list, skipping the clock and compass items since I know there's a lot of repeated texture icons there, and then letting that actually run the spawn item. Uh, a few syntax errors the first couple times I tried to run this, but shortly after I'm able to get it to run. And then we end up with the 200 items being generated, noting on the right hand side how I had already created a collection called items vomit. So that way they are all generated in place inside that collection. Now I'm adding just a simple mesh that will act as the particle emitter for my items. You'll see I'm named it, and then I have actually parented it to the head of my character. Then adding the particles, I am adjusting some of the settings, but first and most importantly, setting the collection to be what is rendered. Then adding some randomization in terms of the outward projection as well as the rotation then realizing that I want to use just a single face to be the emission and then adding some tangent so that it doesn't all just come up completely vertically but a little bit to the sides of the mesh as well. So it's more like a cone that is being emitted. And then now I'm just playing it back and forth a number of times in my viewport to see if I like the motion. I think I was expecting to edit the head motion and play with the keyframes a little bit more but I actually liked the way that it was framed and how it actually revealed the mic. And now I'm doing the final bit of animation with the mic itself. You'll see there I'm actually playing with the interpolation mode, changing it to be cubic or quadratic to see which ones I kind of like to look better. It kind of uh, changes how quickly it goes from one keyframe to the next without having to play too much around with the curve in the graph editor. Again, you'll notice that these are all very quick animations. I'm not spending very much time in the graph editor, which is where you normally would spend a lot of your extra time to get the details and motions just right. And with the microphone here, it probably would have been better if I used a quick physics simulation or something like that. But again, this was quick and dirty. And because it was parented to the hand, I'm just doing this manual animation to give it the dropping and bouncing effect a little bit. At this point, I'm just doing some refining animation, making sure that everything feeds together nicely, adjusting some of the head to make sure that not everything looks too robotic, robotic or in sync. So I'm sometimes adjusting the head to be offset to move earlier than the rest of the body. That kind of helps to break up what otherwise look like very static pose to pose animations.
doing more refinements of the bodies, I was finding that the legs didn't give quite the look I wanted until I adjusted that lower torso to make the, the right leg bend and then end up in a straight leaning fashion like that. Again, this is something where I probably would have done better if I had actually tried to act it out a little bit and notice more the mechanics of where my body ended up, but nonetheless, it looked fine enough for my purposes. And then finally, I'm using a little plugin I wrote, which is ultimately just a wrapper around the render viewport animation to get a quick preview of my animation itself. That's all for this time. This was a, another time-lapse video. Again, I hope you enjoyed this. Please let me know if you're still liking this sort of content. I know a lot of it will get repetitive, so I'm looking for ways to make these a little bit more unique and different. Let me know in the comments below. And until next time.